Welcome to Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. We're glad you could join us today. And today we're gonna to be talking about Air Force ROTC. That's right. Air Force ROTC is the second and largest commissioning source in the grand scheme of how the Air Force produces officers. The first one was USAFA, the Air Force Academy. And the last one is Air Force OTS or Officer Training School. But like you said, Colin, ROTC commissions the vast majority of the, of the people who join the Air Force as officers in a wide variety of career fields. And today we're gonna go in depth about how that works. Yeah, so Reed, let's actually start with what is Air Force ROTC? It stands for Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps. And what this means is that while you are going to college, working on your academics, working towards your degree, whether that is a bachelor's or a graduate degree, you are in the reserve. You are in a uh, inactive reserve status with ROTC, receiving your military training at the same time as completing your academics. There are 145 different detachments serving over 400 different universities across the United States. And that also includes Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. So the great thing about ROTC is it's a really wide funnel. It's recruiting from the most diverse locations and student groups as possible in order to bring in that diversity, which is so important to Air Force success. Right. Where the Air Force Academy also recruits diversity, but so few people are able to go there. They only admit a thousand new students a year and a thousand cadets a year. The Air Force ROTC, on the other hand, produces up to 3,000 officers every single year. Exactly. And with OTS, they are the flexible partner in the whole plan, and they kind of make up the difference of the areas where USAFA and ROTC don't quite get the numbers that we need for that year. But that's one of the greatest things about ROTC is the broad diversity of students and experience that they bring into the service. Yeah, and another thing to contrast it against the Air Force Academy, remember how we said that while at the Academy, you are in the military? That's not really the case for ROTC. You are a normal college student, but you also happen to be taking these other classes through ROTC that helps to prepare you for eventually receiving your commission. So you do get some of that normal uh, partying and, and learning and making mistakes and dating and breaking up and all of those other fun things that are associated with the, the typical college experience. Uh, exactly. But we should probably start with, well, where do you start, right? You get accepted, you're, you have to be a full-time student. We've already covered that. But if you wanna be an ROTC, you wanna become an officer, what's next? Yeah, it's actually really simple. You sign up for the classes. That's right. They are a class offered through the university, but just signing up for the classes is not the whole story. Really the best thing for you to do is go find the detachment and get in touch with the recruiting officer there. There's going to be a commissioned officer who has been assigned a responsibility for recruiting and uh, answering the questions for anybody who wants to join the program. And they will pro provide you all of the information you need about which classes to sign up for, where to show up, how you get your uniforms, all of the things that are necessary for your initial success as you get started in the program. But the bottom line is you're taking these courses, you are getting the military side of things. Uh, at some point, you're gonna have to go to field training, which is at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama for kind of your basic training. That's the everybody's yelling at you, life is really miserable type experience, right? Yeah, super miserable for about 10 days. It used to be much longer. It, uh, it, it's now short, it may go longer again. The, the point is kind of like officer training school, the, the amount of time spent there at Maxwell changes, but what it's all about is giving you the opportunity, just like all of the other commissioning sources, to demonstrate your character, your competence, and your connection with the other cadets and people that are around you. Now, we should also mention that there are also a couple of programs for our prior enlisted professionals. They can also attend ROTC to earn a commission. Um, we've got an episode all about enlisted to commissioning programs. We'll put a link in the description below, but that also leads us to an important thing. Some of the students who attend ROTC can get a scholarship. That's right. One of the greatest things about Air Force ROTC is that it can pay for your school. It doesn't have to. You don't have to have a scholarship in order to qualify uh, in, or, 
in, in order to be eligible for Air Force ROTC, but it is a great way to alleviate some of the pressure and the responsibility of working or um, finding an, other ways to, to pay for your school so that you can focus more of your time, more of your attention, more of your energy on your academics and your military training in preparation for serving in the Air Force. We should give a quick shout out to our sister services with the Army and Navy. They also have ROTC programs, but who are we kidding? We're talking about Air Force ROTC today. That's right. So with that, let's transition to Colin, your experience. You're not only a product of ROTC, but you also went back as an instructor. That's exactly right. Similar to your experience with OTS, you went through OTS, you then went uh, in order to receive your commission, and then you came back as an instructor. That was exactly my experience. I went through Air Force ROTC to receive my commission. I studied mechanical engineering. I took five years to complete my degree, which is actually pretty normal. And then after I went on to active duty, I eventually uh, came back to the very same detachment where I received my commission to be an instructor. And I spent three years there. It was an incredibly rewarding experience, Reed. I loved all the time that I got to be there, seeing the, the growth and development of our cadets. And most importantly for me personally, teaching others how to be an officer helped me to be become the kind of officer that I wanted to be. I am a better person, a better officer, because of the time that I spent as an instructor in ROTC. And Colin, you were an ROTC instructor, but I thought you were a civil engineer. But that leads us to a really exciting thing that we could talk about with all officers. One of the things that we all have an opportunity to do is to give back, to teach, whether that's at our technical training, at the schoolhouse, so to speak, Right? Like I could go back to Goodfellow Air Force Base and teach other intelligence professionals how to be intelligence professionals. Or you can go be an officer recruiter. You can be uh, in these officer trainee locations. Uh, there's a lot of neat opportunities and that just all comes into this big hole of being an officer. That's right. And the process for getting selected into these different instructor positions or recruiting positions is called the Officer Selection and Recruiting Special Duty or OIRSD. Every single year, there will be a centralized selection board where you can put your name into the hat, submit all of your documents, all of your records, and, uh, and put in your preference for the, the kind of special duty that you want to have, whether that's uh, as an instructor at OTS, ROTC, Air Force Academy, or at one of the schoolhouses, or maybe even being a, a recruiter, uh, being at a recruiting station somewhere uh, here in the nation. Exactly. But for the students who go through the program, they're going to have an opportunity to earn and compete for a scholarship, and they're going to be selected for a career field. And at the end of their bachelor's degree education or their master's degree or, or other higher ed, they're going to earn a commission. And after that, they're going to become an Air Force officer and they're going to start doing the mission. Yep. Just like any other commissioning source, they will have a, an active duty service commitment usually of four years upon graduation and receiving that commission and they will go out, uh, out into the wild blue serving just like uh, anybody that came out of the academy or air force or, or out of uh, officer training school they are officers just the same regardless of the commissioning source so if you are a graduate of rotc or like colin you were an instructor we would love to hear from you you can put um, get in touch with us. We've got some information about how to get in touch with us in the description below. We'd love to engage with you in the Heritage Room on our website, or you can reach out to us through the various social media platforms. Right. If you have any other, if you have any questions about maybe getting a scholarship through Air Force ROTC, maybe you're an enlisted airman that is interesting, uh, interested in going through ROTC in order to re receive your commission, we would love to hear from you. We, uh, if we can't answer the, the question for you, we will do our best to put you in touch with somebody who can. Absolutely. Anything else this week before we wrap up, Colin? Nope, thanks for joining us. That will conclude this week's episode of Commission Ed.